Here's a real interesting problem, modeled after a problem in your text, not identical to a problem in your text. And I didn't actually sign uh, the problem that this is modeled after, but it still provides a lot of good insight into the fundamental theorem of calculus. You have a function y equals f of t, just a straight line function. It goes up linearly here, stays level, comes down linearly, continues down linearly, and then moves over linearly. When I, I drew this before, I labeled the axis and this interval got a little bit uh, rambunctious. I, I went a little too far here so that the scale isn't exactly constant. But you understand, I think, what's intended here. Now the question is this. If we have a function big F of t whose derivative is equal to F of t, that is big F is an antiderivative of the little f function that we have here, and since there are infinitely many antiderivatives, if big F of 0 is 0, uh, this will narrow it down to one antiderivative. Uh, the question then is, what are the values of F of 1, F of 2, and so forth? Now, you recall in the depth versus time situation for the uh, flow from uniform cylinder that if F of t was the rate function, then big F of t was the depth function. But there were infinitely many possible depth functions with a given rate function because we could measure the depth from any point we wish to, uh, as long as we keep the point the same throughout the measurement. So uh, that kind of that exactly corresponds to this situation. We're going to say that if this is a, if if little f of t is a rate of depth change function, then big F of t would be the depth function. And by letting big F of zero equals zero. This means that we're measuring the depth from whatever the point is when t equals zero. Okay? So at t equals zero, the depth is zero, and that's where we start our meter stick. Now, how do we do this? Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus and what we learned about the depth function, that the big F function, uh, the function that we get from the rate function, remember the big F is the depth change function essentially, uh, is the antiderivative of this function, which is exactly what we have here. And the fundamental theorem of calculus gives us a perfectly good statement about what happens. It says that uh, in this case, in any case, the integral from a to b of f of t dt is going to be big F of b minus big F of a. The statement that corresponds to this situation, uh, since we're starting with f of 0, we're going to integrate from 0 and that'll give us an f of 0 over here, which is a number that we know it's 0, in fact. And we're going to integrate up to t so that we have big F of t. So if we know the integral from 0 to t of f of t dt, then since we know f of 0, we can easily find f of t. If we know this and this, we easily find this. Now, it's pretty easy for this function to find the integral. The integral is just going to be the area under the curve from 0 up to whatever t is. If t is 1, then it'll be the integral from 0 to 1, the area under the graph from 0 to 1. If we want to find f of 2, well, we integrate out to t equals 2. We let t equal 2, we find the total area from here to here, total area under here, and then we know the integral, and since we know f of 0 is 0, we're going to be able to find f of 2. And similarly, for f of 3, we take the area up to here. For f of 4, we take the area up to here. There'll be some negative and some positive area. And that's all we're going to have to do. So if we come over here, well, let's, let's just look for a second. Let's maybe get this much of the graph. Okay, I claim that the integral from 0 to 1 of f of t dt is 2. That's fairly easy. f of t goes from 0 to 4 over width of 1. So the average value of the function is 2. Uh, the average value of 2 times the width of 1, of course, gives us 2. To get the integral from 0 to 2 of f of t dt, well, we're going to have to add the area from 1 to 2 to the area from 0 to 1. From 1 to 2, the altitude is 4, the width is 2, so the area has to be 4. I'm sorry, the width is 1 here, so the area is 4. And the total area is the 2 we get here plus the 4 we get here, which is 6. To go to the integral from 0 to 3, we have to add the area here. It's pretty clear that that area is 2, and we get 8. And then we're going to add the uh, negative 2 area between 3 and 4 to get the integral from 0 to 4. We add uh, the negative 2 to the integral from 0 to 3, and we get 6. 
and then we add our negative 4 and we get 2. And that allows us very easily to determine f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, and f of 4. Since 2 is f of 1 minus f of 0 and f of 0 is 0, then f of 1 had better be 2. And that's exactly what we get. Similarly, f of 2 is going to be 6 since f of 0 is 0 and so forth.